they don't know The can get shots, they show to blow A shit knocks them down like dominoes Yeah, the pronos, photos All those jokers, they don't know The can get shots, they show to blow A shit knocks them down like dominoes Yeah, the pronos, photos Jared Poland, Frodo's Photo.com What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another chat on the Ustream. Uh, I'm using both Facebook. I've got the Ustream chat popped out of my, um, um, what's it called, my browser. So this is cool, so I can see that and interact on Facebook. So we're going to be doing both. Where's everybody watching from? Are you watching from Facebook? Are you watching from Ustream? Where are you doing it from? Yeah, we're not off air. Yay. <laughs> so if you guys could do me a favor while we start, if you tweet or put out a message on your Facebook, uh, share the video chat, let people know that we're live and they can get some free photo help. Not that it's free. I mean, it is free, but just photo help. Photo help's good. So we'll be answering questions. And uh, yeah, we got my site. We got Ustream. We got Facebook. We've got things to talk about. How did we like the iPad Ustream? Oh, how'd the iPad Ustream work out? Pretty well? I gotta try that out myself. I do have an iPad. It's over there. I didn't even think of that. Darn it, I wanna try that out. So how's everybody's week? Did everybody have a good week? What happened there? That's weird. Anyway. Do, 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 do. no audio anyway what is going on this week what uh we're gonna get some questions we're gonna get some good stuff if my browser doesn't crash which it looks like it's going to do in a minute i know why it's spinning hold on let me stop time machine back up there stop time machine back up so I am going to be looking in the Facebook box as well. And let's roll. So, let's take some quick questions, throw them into the Ustream, throw them into the Facebook. Then we're going to talk about Sigma. I got an interesting phone call from Alan the other day. And um, it's very interesting, the phone call I got. So, let's get to the questions before we get to that. And there is that contest running over there at Alan's camera's what is it, his Facebook page, if you like it, you got a chance now to win two Black Rapid straps, and uh, that's about it. Questions? We got 160 people in there, so let's get some questions. Typing into the box. When is the drawing? Next, um, it goes until Sunday. That's when basically the contest ends, and then I'm sure they'll make, well, we will make a video together announcing who the winner is. Uh, just bought an 85 1.4 and having problems focusing. Well, um, Rhonda, Rachel, Rick, Kirk, my bad. Um, are you shooting at 1.4? Or are you shooting, you know, if you're shooting at 1.4, you may have a problem there. Uh, will we see Heidi this week? Heidi isn't here yet. She's actually going to be here in the later afternoon, which reminds me I should have been doing work instead of listening to the music. I need to print out all the orders and get them ready to go for her. Um, so, okay, so we have somebody that's shooting the 85 1.4, you know, at 1.4. It's not a focusing issue. It's just very difficult to get the, you know, tack sharp focus with such a narrow depth of field 1.4 is so shallow that if you move slightly you're gonna miss you're gonna miss your focus oh wait i'm sorry i'm using the ustream i'm using the ustream box i'm sorry i missed all your questions um because the box was streaming up higher uh so let me scroll back up while we're there um and i'll get back into it let's see slow down chat 
Slow down. Hey, Fro, what's the best way to approach a company to ask their permission for for a free shoot? I'm looking for some nice castle interiors, a lot of Scotland, for a free shoot. Well, if you're going for a free shoot, just call them, show them some work, and then definitely just they should let you in. I mean, if you're doing good work, they're going to let you in. Let's see. Tokina, 11 to 16. I still haven't used it, used it, but I hear it is good. Uh, da -da -da -da. What do I know about the Nikon PC something? I don't know. Only so many times you want to hit refresh before giving up. Well, it's working for a lot of people. How do you shoot large groups, f-stops, etc.? Well, when you're shooting large groups, um, you want to use that hyperfocal distance thingamabobber. You, if you're shooting a large group, you want to shoot at a higher f-stop so that you can focus, um, so that people will be in focus from front to back. I'm turning on slow mode, everybody, so that I could read this stuff. Um, let's see... All the Nikon lenses was mounted on Nikon's bodies. I have a D3100 and love it. Well, good. I'm glad you love it. It's a good camera to have. Uh, Nikon press conference. Um, what? They're holding a press conference on the 24th. And that's all that I think anybody knows. Any tips for shooting sports in the sun? Well, uh, use a lens. Uh, what's it called? Use your lens hood. Don't shoot directly into the sun. Try to put the sun at your back, which is going to be in the face of the athletes, which is always the best thing to do. Man, these chats move fast. What is... I don't understand this levitation photography thing. Somebody really needs to explain. I keep getting pictures uh, of this levitation stuff, but are you just cutting yourself out of of uh, something in Photoshop and then pasting it there and saying it's levitation? How I focus and compose. Uh, yeah, I'll get to that in a second. What do you mean you can't see my face? I can see my face on the stream. You have to jump. Oh. So, you're capturing yourself in mid-motion, and... Or it's just a composite image. See, there's, there's both. Would I replace my D3S with a D4? Well, it depends what the D4 is, how much it costs, and if I really see the, the need for it. Um, I may, but we shall see what happens. Um, creative photography. As a new guy, how does one figure out which side of the Nikon Canon fence I should land on? That's, that's personal preference. Like I always say, you've got Canon, you've got Nikon. It's personal preference. Whatever you're looking to do and whatever feels the best is what you should go with. I personally shoot with the Nikons. That doesn't mean that if I had a whole Canon setup that I couldn't shoot with it. It's again personal preference, Nikon or Canon, um, but I feel that the Nikons are pretty good um, for what I do for low light photography. It's great. What is the PPE event? I will be in New York City in the winter. It's in October. Sorry, when? It's in October at the Javits Center. If you just look up Photo Plus East, it will be there. Yeah, I see about the levitation stuff. Let me look here in the social stream over on the Facebook. How do I make soft portrait pictures? Really? Soft portrait pictures. Oh, I don't see that anymore because I don't see it. Who made your website? Are you going to do a tutorial? No. What would be the difference between a shot taken at 12 millimeter standing close and a shot taken at 35 millimeter standing forward? Uh, it all it all varies. It all varies. What are your thoughts about manual focusing versus auto? I auto focus just about everything, unless unless I'm shooting video, then I manually focus. Um, if I'm shooting uh, macro, then I may manually focus. Um, but other than that, everything I do is pretty much autofocus because that's the easiest thing for me. And plus, for the things I'm shooting, it's just e it's easier for me with my eyes. New season of what? 
When do you use VR? Do you activate it for portraits? I do. It, VR, it, there's certain times I use it. Sometimes I see if I'm using VR with my Nikon uh, 7200 2.8 that if I have the VR on, my images sometimes may not seem uber duper sharp at faster shutter speeds. I don't know why. They're not, I don't need to use the VR at the fast shutter speed, so I turn it off if I'm at like 500th of a second or 1,000th of a second. But if I'm shooting at 250th, if I'm shooting at 320th, I'll probably turn the VR on which will help me keep my subjects in focus. Thinking of purchasing an AFS DX Nikon 10 to 24, 3545 for my D7000. Thumbs up, thumbs up or down on that lens and why? I own the older one. I own the 12 to 24 F4 at the time. I've, he I've heard very good things about the 10 to 24, but I have never personally used it myself. Any slash photography videos? Slash as in slash the uh, musician. What is the ideal focal range for a day in the life of shoot? And every, I mean, the Hebrew Trinity, 14 to 24, 24 to 70, 70 to 200. Those are the killer, killer pieces of glass. Uh, over here in the Facebook box, what do you think about the Carl Zeiss 51.4? Well, the Carl Zeiss lenses are really, really good. It's just that they're all manually manual focus. And for me, for what I personally do, manual focus just won't cut it for me. Must a wedding photographer have backups, etc., for di from day one? No. Uh, well, I mean, you want to have reliable cameras. When you're using pro bodies, like I used the D3 for a while... Uh, I didn't really take a backup. I had two photographers, and somebody else may have had a backup. But you know, right now my backup is a D7000 because I, I that's it's just what it is. I, and my mentality here's the D7000. My feeling on the whole matter is that why am I going to drop ten grand on you know bodies that are going to be worth four grand total in three or four years unless you're really raking in a lot of money and you're doing a lot of jobs then yeah have two of the best bodies that you can put two lenses on use a black rapid double strap and go from there um so i would definitely consider that but unless if you're just starting out stick with your body make sure it's taken care of but if you're shooting alone it may help um it may help to have uh multiple bodies I'm just going to say we're live on Ustream, on the Twitter, and coming back here, is that a Nikon MBD11 on the D7000? How do you like it? So yeah, let me talk about this. Is that what it is? It's a D11? Yep, it's the MBD11. What I like about the, M the, the, the way Nikon does this now is when you unscrew it, check it, check it out, you don't have to take off a door or anything. It just goes in and out, so I can remove this quickly if I don't want to be using the grip. If I just want to use the body itself to shoot, and then to put it back on, I just put it back on, lock it in, and it's ready to go and it's connected. Plus, it has the extra battery, which is great, so I've got two batteries in the camera at all time. One in the camera, one in the grip. Uh, it, it makes the camera feel more substantial. I do notice that on occasion, my face or cheek presses the up up down down left right left right b a b a select start button um but it's it's still worth it to have to have the vertical everything and all so i like that um sigma 10 to 24 or tokina 11 to 16 are good for both oh yes thank you somebody answered a question in there uh so let's see what do you think about cat's eye focus screens don't know what that is Hey, Fro, would you do a video on how you prepare your photos for printing in Lightroom? I'm sure. Uh, would you stay with 50mm Nikon lens or would you upgrade to an 85? There's a totally, there are two different lenses. 50 is obviously much wider and 85 is, uh, you know, with with fixed lenses, with um, with lenses that are prime lenses, it's it's... You, you, there's a certain use for both primes and zooms. I like to use zooms because I can move around. I can 
I can quickly move from one focal length to the other. With primes, you really have to know what you're going to be shooting. Uh, primes are great for studio shooting um, because the subject's really not going to go too far. But for me, for shooting music, for shooting uh, on the road, for on a bus, for what I like to do, I like to have the versatility of the lenses, like a 14 to 24, 24 to 70, and 70 to 200. Jared, D3100 or D5100, planning to purchase them in October. All right, here's the question, Cecile. Yeah, Cecilia, Adeline. Uh, the question is, are you looking to do video? Are you looking to progress further at a quicker pace? If you can afford the 5100, I probably would recommend that over the D3100 because it has the audio input for your video if you're going to be doing... Uh, any of that and you want to wear a microphone if you want to make your own videos it also has the d7000 sensor which is better better quality than the d3100 sensor so i used a d3100 the other day to make a new five minute portrait of mr adam rosenberg scratch and paint.com you remember that guy and he um uh, he has a d3100 so i used it for the shoot instead of using my d3s and it's not bad but it's it's um it's limiting. What do you think of using flash? Well, I mean, flash is a, a necessary thing in certain situations. For a lot of the things I shoot, I personally don't use flash. Uh, hey, guys, put some, uh, you guys on Facebook, if you want to ask some questions on there, I'm going to go spend some time on there and answer some of those. But um, flash is, is another one of those things you got to really master it and know what you're doing with it and i do have a long form flash video on its way it's already recorded sigma 70 to 200 os versus vr2 worth the savings or just make the jump at this point or at that point the vr2 it's no comparison the vr2 is i mean there's a reason why it's 2300 dollars and the other is 1300 if you're on a full frame body i suggest always sticking with the nikon or canon glass if you're on a uh, DX body, D7000 or below, you can get away with the Sigma lenses and be totally happy with it. Um, let's see, Jared, don't you find the 7200 IS very heavy after a full day? Of no, I don't. I've always used heavy lenses. I, I just, the quality is, I mean, I've got, I've got guns right here that used to be kind of bigger, but I don't eat as much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, I don't, I don't worry about using big lenses. So, on to this whole Sigma thing. Did anybody hear about the Sigma 70-200 to non-OS, you know, the HSM? Anybody hear anything about that or notice anything about pricing going on? Anybody can beat me in arm wrestling. Mostly, I'm left-handed, too, so that always plays a thing. Macro flash rings, uh, question from Facebook. If you, I'll tell you about the Sigma thing in a minute. Well, less, they should be less than $8.99. I'll get right back to that. Um, flash rings, if you, if you do a lot of close-up macro work and you do a lot of, say, jewelry, well, maybe not jewelry, but, but bugs and teeth and, you know, dentists, then the macro ring will be great because it's going to put the flash right in front of the subject. Um... I just export out of Lightroom, by the way. Uh, it says, how do I size... Uh, yeah, I've got to read the question and tell you guys. How do I size my um, images out of Lightroom? I put them at full full size, depending on what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, so the Sigma... I got a call that they've discontinued the Sigma 70-200 to HSM that Alan was selling for $7.99 a while back when we got 50 lenses in. And so... Yeah, Alan, I think they sold out at $7.99 recently, but I will tell you that come next week, there's going to be a special fro price on the 70 to 200 HSM, and I'll be making a video from the store because I'm pretty sure Alan's bringing in another hundred of them because they're discontinuing it, and I still, you know, I love the lens at $7.99. I didn't like it as much as at $9.49, and I guess a lot of people didn't either, so that's why... They're dropping, they discontinued it, and I asked the question, are they replacing it with another version? And I was told no. So it means that they're probably just going to stick with the OS version, and that's it. Um, 
What do you think of the Tamron? I've never used a Tamron one. When shooting shooting sports, do you need IS? Most likely, you do not need IS. 85, 1, 4, verse 14 to 24, they're two totally different lenses that you can't really compare because one is an ultra-wide angle and one is a more of a specialty lens. Well, um, the Sigma 7200 non-OS is that, yeah, some people are probably going to still sell it for 949 but it's been discontinued and the price is dropping. They they took 100 bucks off, which means they're protecting the dealers so the dealers can sell it for less. If the dealer decides they want to sell it for higher, they're just ripping you off. So there's going to be a special price for it at Allen's. I'll type it into the box here because I don't want to say it. Well, actually, I'm not going to say it. There's going to be a special fro price that won't be $7.99. Motor scooter. Does Alan sell Pentax? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he does sell Pentax. What is the normal ISO range for the D90 in average light with the 18 and the 105? Well, you're going to want to stay at 1600 or below. Here we go over into the Facebook chat. Have you ever tried Apple Aperture 3? If so, what preferences to let... I've never used the a a Aperture. I've seen demos. I've looked at it. I just feel that it's for... Well, I've never used it, so I can't give you the full-on rundown of why I like Lightroom better. But I just, from the look of of uh, Aperture, well, also from the price, it's 80 bucks. I think that says something, too. I don't think it's as polished. I don't think it's as powerful. Uh, so that's why I stick with the other one. Um, what's the thing with focus and recomposing? I'm not sure what you mean by that. When you first started and you were shooting baseball, where did you start? High school? Actually, I started with middle high, junior high school. What's in the box behind me? That's David Lara's uh, Drobo, the guy who won the Drobo. I have to ship it out to him. I have not upgraded to Lion yet. Not as of yet. Sigma 70-200 2.8HSM. This is from... The Facebook, um, the question was 7200 HSM or Canon 7200 F4. My question is what body? Because a lot will depend on what body you are on. Um, if I, I mean, I would take the 2.8 almost any day of the week over a um, F4. That's just my personal opinion. Why do I not like the seven, the 35 to 72.8 Nikon? I own that lens. I mean, I owned that 12 years ago. It was I never felt that it was a really good focusing, fast focusing, sharp lens on film. I just didn't like it for some reason. It just didn't feel right. Um, that's I, that's that's it. I just didn't like the feel. What's my thoughts on the Canon 24 to 105? Phew! Excuse me. Um, it's an F4. You know, I still love the 2.8s. I still always love the 2.8s. Hey, Joshua, over on the Facebook, um, the Sigma 7200, what body are you on, Josh? That's going to determine, thank you, that's going to determine which body, uh, which lens I tell you to go with. Somebody's asking a question. You have used both. Is the OS worth the extra money? Um, listen, between the 70 to 200 OS, if you can afford the 1300 bucks but don't want to spend the $2,300 for the Nikon or the Canon, and you can afford it, then go with the OS. It's going to be a little better. You're going to get more out of it because of the OS. But at this point, with the, the, the non-OS being discontinued and it going to be you know 800 bucks or lower... That's a great, great value, and I think that lens is going to hold its value over time, which means you're going to be able to sell it for no less than 600 bucks and get all your money back out of it almost. With a 51.4... Hey, i got to turn the fan up. I'm getting hot in here. Whew! All this talking. How many users go on the Facebook page? I go on the Facebook page... 
Should I go with the SB700 or SB900? Well, if you don't have a flash yet, I'd probably invest in the 900 first, more power, uh, or you could pick up a 600 or a 700 as well. They work very well together. Is 8 gigabyte RAW too big for iPhoto to download? Uh, I don't know that. How does locking the focus and then recomposing a p affect the picture? Well, if you lock the focus, what, what are you doing? You're locking the focus. If your subject moves backwards, they're no longer going to be in focus. You have to refocus. If you move forward or back, most likely your pictures could be out of focus because you're locking in in a place and then moving. So it's going from focus and then you move it, it's not going to be in focus anymore. So a lot of the times when I'm doing it, that's why you hear the beep so often when I'm shooting is because I'm recomposing and refocusing both at the same time. Do you use tripods or monopods? If so, which ones? I use both. I have a tripod back here. I've got the three-legged thing. I also have the Manfrotto. Um, I use the tripod for interior work if I'm shooting uh, interiors for buildings because I don't need to handhold or if I'm shooting video. Uh, I use the monopod only with my 300 2.8 or larger camera. Can I review some Canon speed lights? Uh, that's going to be a little more difficult as I don't have the bodies or that or, or that or those type of uh, cameras right now. Hey Jared, I'm buying my first MacBook Pro, so which display would be better for photo editing, matte or glossy? A lot of people like the matte. I personally have the glossy because I didn't want to spend another 100 bucks or something to get the other. Um, but I don't do a lot of editing on my MacBook Pro because that's only for travel. Uh, I use my, my uh, what is this thing called, an iMac for everything else. What is a good flash for the D7000? Well, that's the SB700 or the SB900. What do you think about cell phone photography? I think it's cool because of the only camera that you all, you always have with you. Um, well, let me get back to that. Maddie Ad, Maddie Ad, how do you get into concert photography? I've put out a bunch of information for that. There's bonus videos and everything telling you exactly how to do it. Um, Full frame versus crop. What are the pros and cons? I, I, mean, I mean, this is pros. Full frame is going to give you better low light photography. Plus, it's full frame. Uh, cons, it's much more expensive. Um, DX sensors, you get more bang. Well, you get more zoom. Technical. I mean, I'm not going to get all technical, but yes, it's a 1.5 crop factor and depth of field changes as people get really technical about it, but you get more range. You know, your 300 becomes a 450. Your 70 to 200 becomes a 100 to 300, at least on the Nikon. But I, I'm full frame because of the the angles I get with the 14 to 24 and also the, um, what is it? And also the low light capability. Cell phone photography. I have no problem with cell phone photography. If that's all you have with you, you can get some killer shots. I've gotten some shots. I mean, I have an iPhone 3GS. I'm waiting for this iPhone 5 or 4GS, whatever comes out next. And that's going to have a much better sensor. Um, you can get great pictures with anything if you use composition and all the rules. Um, if you just follow those, and you, you should be able to shoot with a tin can and get great photos if you have a clue about what you're doing and it you know comes down to composition uh, what do i expect iphone f i hope it's an iphone 5 with lte i hope it gets onto the 4g network but i don't think at&t and all these guys are ready for it um but it would be great to have 4g it would be great to tether because i've held off on getting a um a mobile hotspot and i don't want to tether my iphone 3gs to my computer even though it works pretty well i want to have a faster speed tethering without having to purchase another modem or something like that which do you like better over the shoulder camera bags or hard shell pelican cases well obviously there's two different things um over the shoulder is for quick shooting a pelican case is for traveling and shooting out of if you're in a studio so if you're on location and moving around a lot you're really not going to want to use the pe pelican um over here in the Facebook chat, is it worth spending the money on for an SB900? That you, well, I think so. I think the SB900 is a great flash to start with. More power, uh, versatility. It's going to talk well when you do get an SB700 as another flash. So yeah, 
Plus, your 900, if you have a D7000, um, depending on the body you have, a lot of the cameras will remotely trigger it. So more power off, off camera is going to be better off in my mind. I'm starting to make money with photography. I now have an, a D90 and want to upgrade to a D3S and a 70 to 200 lens. Good upgrade? No. Uh, no. Not at this point. Um, I wouldn't jump straight ahead to the D3S, especially right now. We're probably close to them replacing it. I mean, it's four years old. To, well, the D3S is two years old, but the, the system is four years old. Um, I would get a full frame body if you're taking that progression up. I wouldn't spend the five grand if you don't have the glass. Um, who asked that? Uh, Juicipisis. Juicipisis. Do you have a bunch of lenses? Do you have the glass? If you don't have the glass yet, I'd invest in the glass and move up to whatever replaces the D700. So a D4 is good. Well, the D4 doesn't exist um, at all. I, I, if unless you're making, you know, money um, hand over fist. I wouldn't be going full, full, like, D4 unless you have the glass. If you have the Hebrew Trinity, I'd rather see you spend the money on better glass and a D800 if that's what it's going to be called when that comes out. I've already given my general sharpenings for Lightroom presets. You can see it in a bunch of my videos where I talk about it. When in AFS, do you focus until you get the eyes or do you focus and then move the focus points to the eyes. Um, I have 51 focusing points in the D3S. I move the focus points manually to the eyes, especially in, oh, that's in single. Um, in single, there's a couple different ways of doing it. I'll move the focus point to where I want it so, the, uh, so it's composed where I want, or I'll lock in and, as close as possible and then slightly shift. But I have a way of really getting my stuff sharp just quickly composing, locking in, moving, subtle movements, not forward, not back. I'm always relocking in, and that's what I'm doing with that. I do not use Photoshop CS5. Jared, if you're using a 70 to 200 on the camera hanging from the Black Rapid, do you think that the lens is getting too heavy for the mount of the camera? I do that all the time with my D3S um, because I don't want to lock into the tripod mount the, the 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 lens collar because if i want to switch lenses quick i've got to unhook from that take the lens off so i leave it on the bottom of the camera even with the 70 to 200 and i'm happy and secure with it but i also do hold it quite often with my other hand if i'm not shooting um facebook guys if you want to throw in some more you know let me type in here to get some questions on Facebook so a show of hands by saying me in here in Ustream uh, who's interested in the 70 to 200 non OS at the 799 price or better um, if Alan does get in a hundred of them I just want to get a heads up to see who would be interested in actually picking it up because um, it's gonna be US and I guess Canada only um, yeah, there will be Canon. It's going to be both Nikon and Canon. It's going to be tough to get it to the UK. I'm assuming that tax is way too killer on you guys. It's like 20% VAT, or is it higher than that? So if you do receive a lens from overseas, you have to pay the tax on it. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's a pen tax. Uh, not me. Um, so Dana fears the Black Rapid strap um, falling. I used to think the same thing until I got one and used it, and I've used it for the last year and a couple of months, and I love it. The, the strap isn't going anywhere. The strap is on your body. It's not coming off. Um, yeah, it's not. It's not coming off. The only times that you may mess up is if there's a user error and you don't tighten the thing on the bottom enough which I lick it first and then tighten it so it stays nice and tight. Um, I use the, the hook itself to lock it into place. I make sure that the carabiner is locked in, the Fasten R, so that it's not somehow going to come unclipped. But luckily, it's been pretty good, and I'm really happy with it. I have a D700 and a 50 1.4, 24 to 72.8, 70 to 200 VR2. Should I go with a 14 to 24 next? Absolutely. The 14 to 24 will complete your Hebrew Trinity, and welcome to the Hebrew Trinity world. Um, yeah, 14 to 24, 24 to 70, 70 to 200 are the go-to lenses in my book. 
Um, if you're on Canon, the 16 to 35, the 24 to 70, and their 70 to 200 is their Hebrew Trinity. Uh, their 24 to 70 doesn't get as good of a review as the Nikon. I think they really need to up their their game with that lens, and many people agree that that isn't a sharp lens. So you may be better off with like a 24-14 or something like that on Canon's end. Hey, Fro, let's see. Um, well, you can get a, an I shoot raw hat in, in Sweden. They still come in black. I also have, I don't think I've ever sold the red. Did anybody, what do you guys think of the red beanie? I don't think I've ever put this in the store. I don't even know how many of these I have, but I have a couple. I think I may have ordered 10 last year. If Alan gets 3,000 likes, will I give away three straps? Well, he's probably going to be at 3,000 now. If it hits 5,000, I'll get an extra strap. How about that? I'll throw it in. What do I prefer, slingshot backpacks or backpack for your gear? Well, personally, I don't really use backpacks. Um, I have the Slingomatic for Think Tank. Um, it's a good bag for traveling around, and if you're shooting events uh, and you need to keep the bag on your shoulder, you know, on your body the whole time. But it's not the easiest bag to shoot out of because you have to take it off or sling it around the front uh, and and whatnot. I love the Urban Disguise 35 with the backpack straps. Uh, Zach Arias actually bought that based off of my review of it on YouTube, and I agree that bag is incredible. Um, it fits the Hebrew Trinity, a 13 a 13 inch MacBook Pro, and it fits the iPad at the same time. So that is a killer killer bag, and you get those uh, straps, and I love flying with that bag. Where's the Kesha picks? I, I'm not going to show the Kesha. The, here, the Kesha picks are nothing special. If you remember, I was shooting from the soundboard. So there's nothing great there, but, you know, she got to touch my hair. Jared, say hello to a Matis. Uh, oh, a Malaysia fan. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, the Kesha photos, I mean, they're nothing special. She's on stage. I'm shooting from the soundboard, which is so far away. But here's my Kesha photo pass. Hello, Jared. I like your hair. Can I touch it? Yes. Ooh, it's so nice. Your hair, Jared, it's so soft. It's a nice afro. My name is Kesha. Ooh. Mwah. Mwah. Yeah, so there we go. Um, you should get a purple I Shoot Raw shirt. Well, I do have purple I Shoot Raw shirts. They're in the store right now. That's coming from a Facebook question. I'm planning to buy... Here's a question from somebody on on the Facebook... Let me scroll back down. Man, the Facebook chat is wonky. I'm planning on buying a 400 or a 500 millimeter lens. I'm using a D90. I certainly, and certainly upgrade to a D3S or X later. Which lens? Well, 400 millimeter lenses, you're spending 10 grand for it. So if you want a really good 400, you spend 10 grand. Any tips from maternity maternity photo shoots? Um, any V-necks raw shirts? I think there may be two V-necks left. I I think in small. I'm not sure. They sold out most of them. I'm going to order this week more V-necks. If I am ordering V-necks, what colors would you like to see? Um, in in I shoot raw V-necks because I can probably order some extra colors. I don't like V-necks personally. I like this type of neck, but that's me. Juice box. Oh, I should, wish I had a juice box right now. What do you think of the Hoodman HLP Hood Loop 3.0 Prof? The Hood Loop's pretty cool if you if you need it for doing video and things like that. But for everything else, it's you know gets in the way. What is the best upgrade from the Nikon 55 to 200? Uh, that would be a 70 to 200 Sigma if you could swing it. I would definitely suggest that. Um, I still have a lot of V-necks for women, sorry, a lot of regular shirts for women. V-necks are difficult to do for women because the I Shoot Raw would be cut off or something like that. Uh, but I do want to do I Shoot Raw booty shorts that say I Shoot Raw across the butt or sweatpants where they go right down the leg. That would be pretty cool. Question, Jared. What's your advice on setting up the most efficient workspace office at Much Stuff Camera? Uh, I don't know whatever works but i mean everybody works differently in an office 
Um, I have my setup with my Drobos over here stacked and, uh, I don't know, my camera bags on shelves and stuff. Let's look over here in the Facebook. Any advan Is there any advantage in the use of Class 10 SD cards in the D7000 versus any other class speeds when you use it only for stills? Well, yeah, there, there are advantages to the faster cards. I actually have the cards that I use for... Here they are. I have a couple of different cards. I've got Class... I don't know, they call this a hundred, uh, class six, Lexar cards. These you can get at a steal online. This is a 16 gig. It's a class six. I've used it for full videos of 20 minutes long without a problem. I wouldn't go below class six for doing video. Also, the higher the class, the quicker the card is going to transfer to the computer. Here is a Lexar, there was a Lexar professional card. Um, this is a Lexar 32 gig class 10 great card too these things are so inexpensive these days and i put two of them in the d7000 because you get two cards you know what i should just put them back in there so i don't forget you know that's funny sometimes i forget that i'm offloading a card but it's a good thing that i have a second one in here so there's that what about the 70 to 200 sigma guys uh, yeah i fully recommend that for both nikon and canon beauty dish or softbox both it's good to have them both Hey, Fro, could you do an eye shoot raw wristband? Uh, a wristband or a memory band? Um, I don't think wristbands are in, in high demand anymore, but I know the, the, the Remember brands are. I'm not a huge fan of the Transcend cards. I know they can work really well. I just like to stick personally with the Lexar and SanDisk. What is the best 70 to 300 under 1,000? I would suggest the 70 to 200 under 1,000. Uh, you're not going to find a... There is no pro model of a 70 to 300. I mean, they do make a... Uh, Canon makes a 70 to 300 DO... Dewey... Dewey is... DOIS lens. It's just really weird and expensive. I don't think the compact flash is not going to be used in pro bodies. Uh, if you look at the Nikons, they have in the D3S two SD... Two compact flash cards slots, which I prefer using the compact flash... Um, I guess they're more sturdy. I, I, who knows what they're going to do. They could always change to something else. But I know that Canon makes a cool video camera that takes compact flash cards to do video. That's awesome. Do you have a battery grip? Yeah, I do have a battery grip on my D7000. We saw that earlier. How is the video on the D90? The D90? Well, Alan actually just got in some D90s in stock. I was there the other day when he pulled them out. Um... The video on the D90 is not the best. It is the first camera that Nikon did. It has a lot of jelloing. Um, it's not really the best for videos. It's pretty good with stills, though. Do I ever shoot political rallies? I have photographed political rallies. I photographed John Kerry when he was running for president, and I photographed uh, Barack Obama a couple of times, and... Um, I mean, really, they're going to tell you where you can go to shoot, photograph from, and you're really limited to just that. D700 or wait to see what Nikon says on the 24th. Also, I, was, uh, I don't think they're going to be putting out a, a new camera on the 24th. I really don't. Um, but if they do, I mean, I would wait. The D700 should be coming up for a new one at some point, probably next year. I would definitely wait. Um... Is the Canon 500D a good is uh, good for a beginner? This is the 500. Was that is that an X a T2i or a T3i? I don't know which one the 500 is. This is a good question um, about the should I get a Think Tank Airport Security Version 2 if I fly? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if it's between the international and the airport security, I have both. But I love the security. The security's bigger. I'd rather travel with it because if I'm going to travel with a rolling bag, I might as well use the big one. I end up putting clothes in there. I end up putting more gear in there. I can take my 300, my whole Nikon setup. If I don't want the 300, I have more room for like clothes. So that's, I like that one.
Well, if you're going with the 518, here's the question. On the D90, they don't know which lens to go with. Um, I would go with the new 50 1.8. The old 1.8 is good, but the new 1.8 G is extremely, I mean, what, 220 bucks? Well worth it. I'd pick that one up. T2i. The T2i is very good. It's a good little camera for both video and still. So if that is your first beginner camera, then yes, it's a good way to go. But make sure you get some good glass with it. Okay, good question. What do I think about the Sigma 24-70 to compared to the 24-70 to Nikon? Like I said, if you're a full-frame shooter, I would only stick with the Nikon or Canon glass for professional use only. Uh, if you shoot on DX cameras and you really want a 24-70, to which isn't that wide then I would suggest, you know, then, then it's fine on the DX. Is the Canon 550D suitable for weddings? Any camera is suitable for weddings. It's about the photographer. But if you want to look the part, then probably, probably not. Best insurance warranty guarantee for a DSLR. I actually just got my new insurance quotes in the mail um, from Travelers. And it's going to cost me 575 bucks for the year which isn't terrible. Um, that's for like two or three million dollars liability if somebody falls over my camera gear or they trip or I injure somebody with punch, you know hitting them with a camera or a monopod uh, and then I'm covered for a good amount of camera gear if it gets lost, stolen, broken, not broken from wear and tear, broken because you drop it, kick it, run it over in a car. Um, just don't ever abuse insurance. You know, don't try to pull one over on the insurance companies, not because insurance fraud, but I mean, that's one thing, but more so because, um, more so because of, uh, karma. I mean, not, if some people don't believe in it, but I just, I'm not a big fan of, of, you know, cheating. I don't want to cheat and I don't want to tempt fate. And if, you know, if you lie that your camera was stolen and it really wasn't, then that could come back to bite you in the butt in many ways. What kind of setup would you suggest for action sports? I already got, already have the Sigma 17-50. Sports lens, first sports lens I ever bought, seven, well, was an 80-200 to Nikon. I'd say 70-200 Sigma, HSM version 2. Now that the price is back down to 799 uh, even though Allen's is sold out, I think there's 100 coming in. There will be a video from the store when that comes in um, talking about a fro price for you fro readers who call in. And they'll definitely put it back up in their store. Nikon D5100, good for beginner camera, action, sports, and video? Yes, it's good. The focusing system is not as good as the D7000, but it's going to be a good starter camera. If you're going to do video and photos, it's better than going with a 3100 in my mind. Um, I definitely would suggest the 5100, not because of the articulating screen, but because you can have the D7000 sensor as well as the input for video. D5100 Part 2 Second Video, I don't have it, didn't like it, I recorded one, wasn't happy with it at all, so not sure if I'll get my hands on another one to make it, but it, it was really just going through the settings in the camera. Um, it's stuff that you guys could pretty much figure out. 8200 push pull for a starter photographer. Um, the push pull isn't the greatest lens. It was pretty good then, but the ED2 touch killed it. Um, but if you can get it for like 400 bucks or less, I'd say go for it if you can, if you're on a body that has a focusing motor. Have you ever done a time lapse? The other day with Adam Rosenberg, I videoed, I used video to do the time lapse. Literally, I did like an hour and 40 minutes with the D7000 of him painting from blank canvas to finishing the first layer. Uh, I will show this when he's done fully complete and we'll go literally from start all the way to finish and um, that will be pretty cool. Let's see. I used iFi card. I've never used the iFi and this is coming from the Facebook chat. I've personally never used the iFi. I can't see using it to shoot raw or have a need for it. Um, maybe in future cameras, they're going to have some Wi-Fi built in that if your phone, uh, that's, see, that's going to be weird. You know, listen, if you're going to wirelessly transmit raw files at 25, 30 or more megs a piece, you're going to kill your battery. Your phone's going to die and you're going to put a lot of ones and zeros right through your leg. If you're, if you're, um, if your phone is in your pocket, which means you could get ball cancer and you want to be careful about that. 
Uh, so it's time to get my company legalized, but I'm only 15. Although I'm young, I've made almost $1,000 this year, but it looks like you have to be over 18. I don't think you need to be over a certain age to start a business unless that's something in another country. You can form an LLC, um, Limited Liability Corporation. I would talk to your parents and then talk to an accountant and see what they have to say because you can start a business at any age. Da, 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 da. How we doing, guys? We, we doing good? These questions and answers helping everybody out now that we have another 10 minutes left this week. Um, yeah. I own a pair of pocket wizards. I use them for studio to trigger off my strobes. Uh, I really need to learn how to use them to trigger off another camera because that's another way you could do it. You see a lot of baseball photographers. They set up a remote camera or two remote cameras with transceivers on top. And when they shoot a picture with their camera that they're using, the other two cameras shoot. So they're taking three pictures with three different cameras at the same time. Is that good? In my opinion, no. I don't like remote cameras like that that fire at the same time you shoot the others. I think it's a form of cheating. Uh, and also, they usually don't shoot raw because they're just wasting lots of shots. Lil's fine. She's downstairs. I just gave her some lunch. She had some egg salad on bread with some uh, potato, potato, uh, da, 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 potatoes. What cameras are full frame bodies, I guess, for Canon? Yeah, 5D Mark II and the 1D, uh, 1D Mark IV S. 1DS Mark IV, that's what they call it. Yeah, shows, podcasts, they're going to be different. I think I'm going to get Adam Lerner in on it, and I think Adam and I are both going to together do a weekly just chat session um, and then put it up as a podcast. Maybe we'll do it as a Google Hangout where he and I will just talk, and then we'll put that up as a podcast. Um, I have a Google chat that was really awesome that we should put up. Um, I also have to set up a new podcast stream and get that going off of um, iTunes so that you guys can download it and I can just put up anything I want as an audio podcast. I think everybody knows that answer. I don't need to even talk about that. Uh, you're always a big help. Thanks. Great videos from Adam. Yeah, Adam's doing a great job. Adam's built a nice little YouTube channel following already. Um, I like, you know, helping him get that started and also working together because that's what it's all about. Um, so he's forming his brand and there's nothing wrong with helping him out do that because he's a great help on the site. Ordering cards from Gotprint, what paper quality do you use? For business cards, I use the 14 pound paper or 14 point, they call it the 14 point paper. That's what I use. I do the glossy, full color front, full color back. Uh, if you're looking to write on a card to take notes, then do glossy on one side and do matte finish on the other. How do you get to shoot a wedding for a first time, you ask? You go out and you shoot weddings. You talk to people. Most likely it's going to be a friend who doesn't want to spend a lot of money. You're going to shoot with them. All right, I have a 70 to 300 to use for indoor sports on the D7000. What's the highest ISO I should use? Well, the D7000, you could do 4000 ISO, but, you know, this is why I, I, I push the better glass. Because, one, when you shoot with a 70 to 200 2.8, you can drop, you know, that 70 to 300 is going to be like a 5.6 out at the end, which means, you know, you're going to be shooting at 4000 ISO and still not getting a great shutter speed. But, Al, you know, when you talk about the triangle, uh, when you open up your aperture, you're letting more light in. When you let more light in, you can drop your ISO. If you need a faster shutter speed, you can bump the ISO, but you're still not as high as if you were shooting with a non-2.8 lens. Have I ever done low-light party video? I've done low-light video. Um, just set it manually. It does a great job in my mind. What is the better upgrade after the D90? Well, the proper step after that would probably be whatever is replacing the D300S whenever that's going out. Any tips for shooting football? N not really. Uh, football was not one of my specialties, but, you know, get action shots. I mean, tough, hard-hitting action shots 
That's what you should look for. Peak action, guys catching, guys jumping, guys getting the crap beat out of them. I have only used an 18 to 200 and want to step up to a 2.8. What is your suggestion for the most versatile upgrade? I'm spoiled with that range. Yeah, you may be spoiled with the range of an 18 to 200, but you'll be spoiled with the quality that you get out of a 70 to 200, and you'll sit there and say, why did I keep an 18 to 200 for so long? So I would definitely go with a 70 to 200 Sigma. For weddings, offer to assist somebody. Great idea. That is actually absolutely what you should do. Is you get the you get to assist for other people. So even if you don't get the greatest pictures in the world, you are getting experience. What flat? What type of flash? I have an SB800. What studio strobes do I use? I use the white lightnings. Tokina 16 to 28, 2.8 or Nikon. I I mean. Nikon, I'd love the 14 to 24. Is it worth to upgrade from a DX to FX if not if I'm not doing it for money uh, with it just a deeper in whatever that says just a hobby. Is it worth it? Is it worth it to you? Do you want full frame? Do you want to get certain images in lower light or you know just better not saying better quality but yeah, the quality will be better in a full frame camera with good lenses. Yeah, it's worth it if it's worth it to you, if that's what makes you happy when you're shooting. 14 to 24 versus 16 to 35. One's a 2.8 and really wide, and one's an f4. So, I like the 2.8s. You, Jared, you ever been in a, into street candids? I don't like street photography. I'm not a street photography fan of just random stuff going on on the streets. Uh, that's me. A lot of people like it. Um, but I'm not a big fan of just hanging around on the street and shooting random people. Photographing random people, that's not my major thing. What card reader do you use? I have right now, I have a couple. I've got this SanDisk Extreme 3 card reader that was both compact flash and SD. And uh, and if I had a Mac, if I used a Mac Tower and had more freaking Firewire, I'd use my Firewire 400, sorry, Firewire 800 Extreme card reader, which kicks ass. But I just use that on my laptop. Getting photo books made. Um, I've been looking... Now, Blurb, I wouldn't touch Blurb. And I don't say this because Adorama advertises on the site. But Adorama picks, before, like, two years before they even... Before I even started Fronos, I was using their photo books because they're real photographic paper. Great hardback covers. Um, great quality prints. It's real prints. Blurb is not a real photographic print. So check out Adorama picks. Uh, ending, I think, the 23rd, you can test. They've got 8x8 books for $8.99 plus shipping. 15 pages. Try it out. I, that's a great steal. Um, I like that. I want to invest $12,000. What do you think? What kind of equipment should I get? That's a lot of money to invest into equipment. Um, if you're going Nikon, 14 to 24, 24 to 70, 70 to 200, you get those lenses, you're looking at $2,300. Uh, three, blah, 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 almost five or six thousand dollars just in that glass. But I probably wouldn't spend another five grand on a D3S. Maybe find a D3S used when the D4 comes out, or go with an SB8, uh, sorry, uh, an 800, Nikon 800 or something. If that is what's coming out and what next, Adorama does post to the UK, uh, Adorama will ship around the world. Nothing wrong. Give away a Drobo. I need one. No, I already gave away two. Yes, Adorama does ship to the UK. I'm thinking about getting a Nikon 40mm for my D7000. What do you think about it? Should I get it? Should I get a different lens? Well, when that lens is out, that's going to be a good one. How do you get sponsored? Well, they, they, they advertise through the site. They liked what I was doing. I used their product. I only I only take advertising from product uh, from companies that I actually use um, and believe in. So you're not going to see me do something like... Um, I can't think of something really bad right now that I don't like. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, anybody know anything about lens coats? Anybody use a lens coat before? Nikon 50D known for being soft. It's just old. It's known for being old right now. That was a very good camera back in the day. It was the first one to take SD cards. How long? I've been shooting since I was 13, so we're on like 17 years now. 
Do you use the camouflage ones or do you use the, the different, just a straight up? For those of you who don't know what a lens coat is, I'm gonna I'm getting some lens coats in the mail shortly. Um, they're gonna they're like neoprene covers that protect your camera uh, your lenses while you're using them or while they're in your bag. A lot of nature photographers use the camouflage ones. I wouldn't be caught dead with a camouflage cover on my camera. I could see possibly using the black neoprene one just as protection. We'll see how it feels in the hands. I may use it, but if it you know I, now that I think about it, if if it's going to make it thicker and harder to handhold, I may not use it. Um, but they're coming in the mail. I'm going to test out the lens coats. They're custom made for each particular lens. I know a lot of people do use them. My first DSLR was a D2H. My first film camera was a Canon, Re uh, Canon EOS Alon. So I went above the Rebel at the time to an EOS Alon. I don't know of a good online wedding photo book publisher uh, that ships internationally. No, I've never bought a cheap accessory from eBay that has worked really well. My um, experience with buying anything cheap is that you end up replacing it with the better piece of gear in the future and wasting money. I do not use filters. That is my personal preference. If you are worried about using filter, Allen's does ship to Canada, I hear. So you'll have to drop them an email or leave them a, uh, send them a message on their Facebook page about it uh, to get all the details. So I'm going to wrap it up pretty soon. My voice is getting spent from this. And um, I still see we have 200 people still watching, which is good. Uh, how many, here's a question. How many photos do I submit to a client for a wedding? I like to deliver around 400. I do not want to deliver 800. I do not want to deliver 2000. First off, I don't shoot 2000 images during a wedding. If you do, you're creating a lot of extra work for yourself and you're overcomplicating and overshooting things. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. You guys are welcome. So, what is coming up? Well, this week I'm going to hopefully have that special for Allen's. Can't wait to see what is coming in. Uh, if the, you know, the 7200s are discontinued and see what the fro price will be. If Allen does get 100 in this week, I'll make in a video with it to announce that. Uh, because I think it's a steal, a steal, a steal, I say, of a lens. For a 70 to 200 2.8 OS, if you are on a DX body, both Nikon and Canon, a D7000 and below, um, this 7200 HSM is a steal of a lens at 799 discontinued. If you can afford to, to do that, it's going to be worth it, and I guarantee you can sell it as you progress as a photographer for 600 bucks. Even if you got it, even if you sold it for 550 bucks, you basically rented a 2.8 lens for two years for 150 bucks. 550, 650, seven, uh, 250 bucks, whatever, 200 bucks. It's still worth it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Also, I may be heading out on the road with a band for, I think, four days coming up uh, in two Mondays. Uh, I'll let you know if that's going to happen because then we'll see what I do for those four days on the site. If I preload videos or if we just uh, make it a whole road documentary type thing where I'll somehow get you to follow me on the road through Ustream or whatnot when I'm on the, the tour bus uh, and, what, and, and whatever. Yeah, tour bus and whatever. Oh, boy. All right, my voice is going. And I think that's it. So, guys, thank you for watching here in the Ustream. Thank you for watching on the Facebook page. Uh, if you haven't liked Alan's Facebook page, be sure to go over there and like Alan's camera on Facebook. It's the Alan's camera in Pennsylvania. It's not the Alan's camera in the other states. Um, you will see it. It's the one with the more likes. There's over 2,500 likes. It's not the one with 600 likes. So you'll know which one it is. And there's no red in Allen's logo. So definitely thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to like them over there. Uh, check out the summer sale is still going on in the store. And that is about it. Thank you for watching. Jared Poland, Fro Nose. 
photo.com. See ya! Don't do blow a shit.